Hello students. In this video, we're going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. First thing I'll do is just remind you of what an eigenvector is. Um, imagine you take a vector and you, multi uh, you multiply the matrix A by that vector. Now remember that that is going to um, take the vector and it's going to uh, move it somewhere. Okay. Um, now what you're looking for here is for an eigenvector. An eigenvector is a special case. If you multiply the matrix A times the vector, then it either uh, magnifies it or contracts it, or it could even change the direction of the vector and magnify and contract it in the opposite direction. But the point is that that vector, um, that eigenvector V, uh, lives on this line. Okay, so it um, so this lambda V is going to be all the vectors that are linearly dependent to this vector V. So multiplying A times V gives you a linearly dependent vector. So you get AV equals lambda V. So you get a scalar multiple of the vector. Okay. So multiplying A times V gives you a vector that is a scalar multiple of the vector you multiply by. And that is what an eigenvector does. It gives you the, all the vectors that live in this subspace. So you want to find those special vectors. Okay. That doesn't, that's not always the case. Um, multiplying A times a vector doesn't always give you something on this line. Um, but you're looking for the special case of vectors that, for which that is true. So we want to find those vectors. So in order to find those vectors, we look at this equation, AV equals lambda V. We do a little bit of algebra, and we move the lambda V over to the left-hand side. And if we do that, we get AV minus lambda V is equal to the zero vector. Um, this equation, AV equals lambda V, is the same thing as saying AV minus lambda V is equal to the zero vector. Likewise, if I factor out the V vector here, then I'm saying that the matrix A minus lambda and then I have to multiply by the identity matrix because A minus lambda is an incompatible operation. So um, I need to put this uh, identity matrix into here. I'll give you an example of this A minus lambda I for this specific case in a moment. And the point is you get this linear equation, you get this linear system here. A minus lambda I times the vector V is equal to the zero vector. This is how we're going to find the eigenvectors V. However, in order to do that, you really need to find the eigenvalues first. Now, to find the eigenvalues, um, you have to realize that you want to find the non-trivial solutions to this um, system where you have um, this homogeneous system. We have zero on the right-hand side. So, look, all the lambda v's are linearly dependent on these v's. So you have this linear combination of vectors that are uh, linearly dependent on each other. So that means that their determinant is going to be equal to zero. A more sophisticated way of that saying that is you want to find the non-trivial null space of a minus lambda i. In order to do that, you um, know that the, um, to find a non-trivial null space, you'll get a zero determinant. Okay. So that's how we're going to find the eigenvalues. We're going to take the determinant of a minus lambda i. So in both cases, we have to find the matrix a minus lambda i. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the eigenvalues lambda by taking the determinant of a minus lambda i. Then we're going to find the eigenvectors by solving the system a minus lambda i times this vector is equal to the zero vector. We'll do it for this speci special case. So in both cases, since I have to find a minus lambda i, I'll work out the steps for you um, here. So I take a minus 9 minus 12, 1 minus 2. I subtract lambda times the identity matrix, which has ones on the diagonals and zero everywhere else. I distribute the lambda. And when I do that, I just get lambdas on the diagonal. And then, of course, a minus lambda i is the same thing as saying minus 9 minus lambda on the one diagonal and minus 2 minus lambda on the other diagonal. The other entries are untouched. So you could go right from this matrix, minus 9 minus 12, 1 minus 2, down to this matrix here. Just subtract lambda off the diagonals. So it looks like the same exact matrix. You just subtracted lambda off the diagonals. We're going to use this matrix in both of these cases to find the eigenvalues and to find the eigenvectors. To find the eigenvalues, we take the determinant of this matrix. So we take the determinant of this matrix, and then we set it equal to 0. When we take the determinant, we multiply the diagonal entries, and we subtract the product of these off-diagonal entries, and then we set that equal to 0. So if you expand all these terms and um, do all the arithmetic, you get lambda squared plus 11 lambda plus 30 equals 0. That is called the characteristic equation. 
Um, I factored this uh, characteristic equation. You could also use the quadratic formula if you like. Um, in this case, I get lambda plus 5 is equal to 0, and I get lambda plus 6 is equal to 0. So uh, you might solve it and get lambda plus 6 equals 0 first and lambda plus 5 equals 0 first. Uh, all the work and the algebra and the arithmetic that follows is exactly the same. I'm going to solve the case lambda plus 5 equals 0 first. So I'll call that lambda 1 is equal to minus 5 if I solve that equation. My second case will be lambda plus 6 is equal to 0, and I will solve the case lambda 2 is equal to minus 6. So that'll be my second case. Now, I get two eigenvalues. That's how much um, we're going to expand or contract the vector v by. In this case, we might be minus 5 indicates that we're going to change the direction of v and move it in this direction if it's pointing out in this direction. And we're going to amplify it by a factor of 5. Um, likewise, uh, similarly for lambda 2 equals minus 6. So now, to f now that we have the eigenvectors, uh, the eigenvalues, we've got to find the eigenvectors. To find the eigenvectors, we're going to have two cases. We'll have lambda 1 is equal to minus 5, and then we'll have the second case, lambda 2 equals minus 6. Now, this system here, a minus lambda i times v equal to the 0 vector, looks like this system here. I subtract lambda off the diagonal entries. That's how I get a minus lambda i. The v vector's here, and then I get the 0 vector. That's zero, a column of zeros. So I have a minus lambda i here, and I'm going to write this as an augmented matrix. So I'll put the 0 on the right-hand side. Now, this first column corresponds to v1. This second column corresponds to v2. For the case lambda 1 equals minus 5, I will put lambda equals minus 5 for lambda. As I did here. I'll simplify that and we'll get this augmented system here. Now remember the first column corresponds to v1, second column corresponds to v2. Um, you could solve this by Gaussian elimination. Uh, I'll, I'll do that um, by showing you can still do row swaps and you can um, still do row operations to solve this. I'll swap the um, first row and the second row and I'll multiply the second row by minus 1 um, then perform the swap. So um, we'll get this um, matrix here. And then um, I'll add four times the um, first row added to the second row to eliminate the second row. And of course, as we expect, we should get a free variable here because we're going to have an infinite number of solutions. Here are the row operations I performed. So if v2 is free, then I'll, set, I'll parameterize that by setting that equal to t. And then I get v1 minus 3v2 is equal to 0. And then if I push the 3 over to the other side, I'll get v1 is equal to 3t. So lambda 1 is equal to minus 5. That's that eigenvalue. Associated with that is the eigenvector v, which is 3t in the first component, t in the second component. I factor the t out, so I get 3, 1. Um, oftentimes, we'll let t equal 1 or some number that gives us integer values if we can find it in this um, uh, column vector here. So I'll just call this eigenvector 3, 1, knowing that you actually get an infinite number of possibilities. To find um, the second eigenvector associated with lambda 2 equals minus 6, we do something similar. We let lambda 2 equal minus 6. I substitute minus 6 into this equation, so I get a minus 6 for lambda, that's going to give us a minus, minus 6 gives us a plus 6, so minus 9 plus 6 gives us a minus 3. Minus 2 minus minus 6 gives us a minus 2 plus 6, which gives us a 4 in this diagonal entry here. And now we solve this system. Um, I just simply multiplied the top by minus 1 third, the top row by minus 1 third, added it to the second row, and um, we zero out the second row. Of course, then we get a free parameter, v2 is equal to s. I'll call it something different because I can scale it differently if I like. Then the top equation, we get a minus 3v1 minus 12v2 is equal to 0. Since v2 is equal to s, I move that over to the other side. I get a 12s on the right-hand side divided by minus 3 gives us a minus 4s. And so associated with lambda 2 equals minus 6, we get the eigenvector minus 4s in the first component, s in the second component. I factor out the s, and we get the eigenvector minus 4, 1, scaled by s. So. Um, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix are lambda 1 is minus 5 is the first eigenvalue. Associated with that the eigenvalue is the eigenvector 3, 1. The next eigenvalue is minus 6. Associated with that eigenvalue is the eigenvector minus 4, 1. 
and keep in mind that these eigenvectors can be scaled by these multiples, but um, typically we'll enter our answers as minus 5 and the associated eigenvector my, uh, 3, 1, and then minus 6 for the eigenvalue and the associated eigenvector minus 4, 1. All right, good luck.